And tonight, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn this scene, amen, to the book of Psalms, chapter 28, verse number 9, the book of Luke, chapter 16, verse number 10. So, the book of Psalms 28, verse 9, and the book of Luke, chapter 16, verse number 10. We're going to dig into the Word of God there this evening. You know, how many know that we encourage, and a lot of people in the world love to encourage, amen, the fact that go big or go home. That's a common saying amongst the world as far as whether it's entertainment uh, the sports world as well. The idea is that if you're going to do something, make sure you do it as big as possible, as loud as possible, as noticeable as possible. However, there is a problem with that statement simply because not everything that we do in life involves the biggest things. And I believe what a lot of people do is ignore the most common, everyday, simple matters of life and the small little things that happen in everyday life scenarios. And as we have been looking into the Will of God series for the past number of weeks, we're going to dig into uh, one of the final thoughts about what the Will of God involves in our lives. And the Will of God really involves the small things. Uh, we're going to look at the book of Psalms, chapter 28, verse 9. Read along with me this scene, church. It says, Save your people, bless your inheritance, and shepherd them also, and bear them up forever. Luke 16, 10. And he who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Amen. A sermon I entitled this evening, The Will of God Involves the small things. Let's look this evening very quickly, firstly, about big versus little. Now, like I said, people often look at the big things in life. You know, I've been a sports uh, fanatic my entire life, and uh, typically in the off seasons between uh, the end of a championship run and the start of a new season, during the off season, uh, a lot of teams try to make big moves, and, and the mindset is we're going to spend our money to get the biggest name out there, right? Uh, the other day on Wednesday, I talked about, or Sunday, I talked about Shohei Otani, who signed a $700 million contract. That's a big contract. Not only that, but that's a big name. And oftentimes, teams would try to sign the biggest, most popular, most athletic and gifted uh athlete out there to get them on their club or get them on their team to push them a little bit over the cusp into the championship realm. And the idea is go big. That's what you need to do because the big things are what we often like to focus on. This is not only true within the world, but I believe in the kingdom of God as well. There's the idea that God pays attention to the great things that we do. We look at the word of God and we see uh, mentions, we see stories about great people. We see the story of David, a king who had conquered, a king that had led, a king that did tremendous and mighty things. We look at Jesus' ministry, that he preached and he fed thousands of people. Not only that, but his crucifixion involved him being crucified in the eyes of hundreds, if not thousands of people at the time. We see Moses in his life, taken from the very back parts of the wilderness, but then he's there in front of Pharaoh's court. He's doing miracles. He's putting a staff in the middle of the road, uh, in the middle of the river, and it parts right before him. There are plagues that come down through Moses' hand. There are big things that are happening in his life. Samson, the big victories that he had in his life as well, all across the Word of God, you can help but look at some big events that have happened. But I believe him in this evening. It is within our detriment as mankind that we focus on a lot of the big things, but we tend to forget about the small matters and the small things of life. Within our scripture, the book of Luke chapter 16, we actually see the story of Jesus painted a picture 
And he's telling a parable to his disciples. And it is about a man, a rich man, the Bible says, that gives some finances, gives some things to his, his steward or his servant. And he leaves and comes back and he gives account. In the book of Luke chapter 1, he said, no, Luke 16 verse 1, And he said to his disciples, there was also a certain, a certain rich man who had a steward. And the accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So he called him and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be steward. And then later on in verse 10 is where we pick up. It says, He who is faithful in what is least is also faithful in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is also unjust in much. In our scripture we see that this man believes his stewardship of the small everyday things doesn't matter. As long as at the very tail end of it, I get it right, then all the other things don't even matter. If you think about the will of God, we've talked about the fact that we need to make heaven our home. That is totally true. To build a relationship with God. But what about all the things in between there? You know, Jesus often deals with the little parts of life as well. In the book of Matthew, he you know, converses with a lot of religious zealots. And he has this conversation with them. He says, you, know, you say that if you have you know, an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth, you know, he said, but I say if you even look at someone with a little bit of hatred in your heart, you, you, you've committed murder. You look at the big things, but he said, I'm looking at the small matters. If you just look at someone with a weird eye, you've already committed murder. Not only that, but he goes on even further. He says, you say that if uh, you, you shall not commit adultery. He said, but I say, I'm looking at the small things. If you even look at a woman with lust in your heart, you have already committed adultery. We see Jesus in his ministry in this situation. He's dealing with, you know, you were talking about the big, huge things in life, the big sins, but I'm talking about the small matters of life. The will of God, yes, I understand, is very huge. There are some in this place, your mind is like, what does God want for my life? Does He want me to preach one of these days? Does He want me to become a pastor or a pastor's wife? Does He want me to be a missionary, an evangelist? Uh, who should I marry? You know, that's far down the line. How many kids? Am I going to have a family? My job, my school, all these things. And we're thinking big things. And I understand that. But as we look at our scripture, we look at Jesus. We see that he says, do not neglect the small things just because you are so focused on the big things. And let's look secondly and quickly to the God of the little things. I almost said the little people, but that's a different sermon right there. God of the little things. You know, God looks at all that happens on the earth. You know, nothing escapes his watchful eye, whether it's big events or small events as well. The book of Zechariah chapter 4 verse 10 says, For who has despised the day of small things? For these seven rejoice to see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. They are the eyes of the Lord which scan to and fro throughout the whole earth. Think about that. He's saying God is looking at the entire earth and he's going throughout the, and he's watching everything that we do. Am I reminding this place? God knows what's happening in the world. God knows the conflicts that are happening right now in Ukraine and right now in Israel. But he also knows the conflicts that are going on in your own household. God also knows about the conflicts that are going on in your mind and in your heart. Maybe the conflicts that you've had in your head. As your head is on the pillow and you're laying down, about to go to sleep, and you're pondering, thinking, debating, fearing, doubting, all God sees those conflicts as well. God sees all that happens. And the reality is, amen, this evening, when we look at God and His watchful eye, amen, tonight, why does God want to watch the entire earth? Because He doesn't want to let anything escape His eye, especially the small things in life. God doesn't want to let those slip by. Yeah, He sees the big things. He makes an issue with it. But also, He says, I'm not going to forget about the small things. Why do the small things matter, amen, tonight? 
Number one, we see very simply that small things can have bigger outcomes than expected. In our verse of Scripture, we see in verse number two, he says, So he called him, and he said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account for your stewardship, for you can no longer be a steward. Think about that for a moment. He's like, think about what you're doing. The small matters of life, the things you've ignored, is it, did, did, did you really think I would not notice? Did you really think those would go fall on the F ears that no one would even know, no one would pay attention? He said, but I am a God that sees all that happens, and I've paid attention to all these things. And you had no idea and no clue that these small matters of life would, have, would grow into the fact that you're going to lose your stewardship. Did you even think that was possible? No, no way. You ask any criminal. Did, did, did you think you're, you're sitting here in prison having to do 10, 20, 30 years because you've robbed and so you've done all the, do you Did you think it would start out like this? No. You ask any person on the street who's dealing with hard drugs and addictions, did you think it would start out like this? from a simple cigarette that you had back in the eighth or ninth grade. No, no way, I didn't, it wouldn't happen like this. I, I never thought it would be like this. You ask any couple who was on the verge of divorce, when you said I do, did you think it'd end up here? No, we didn't. Did you think this little fight that you had at home would end like, no, we had no clue it would end like this. And for a lot of people, we allow certain things to pass. We allow certain things to be okay. And we ignore the small things because we think it's just a small thing. It's, it's not that big a deal. Well, boss, I'm only late five minutes. Well, you know what? I only took a candy bar from the store. Well, it was just a look. Well, it was just a website. It was just a picture. It was just a little sin. Well, it's just a little bitterness, a little bit of doubt. In them, but it's not a whole bunch. It's just a small matter. What's the worst that could happen is the idea that a lot of people say. Small things can really have bigger outcomes than expect. Do you think this guy, if you ask him, did you think you'd get fired? No, no way. I'm just doing what I did. Yeah, I ignored some small things. It wasn't faithful. It was a little bit late here. I understand all these things, but I don't think it'd come to this. You know, in October 10th, 1871, they said it had been a season of extreme dryness. A lot of sun and only a little bit of rain sometime. And they said it went like this. A little couple named Patrick and Catherine O'Leary lived in their little house. The little lady got up early that morning. She got a little mat and she lit a little oil lamp. Later on, she went out to the little barn to milk their little Jersey cow. There was a little wind blowing that morning. She got a little hay and placed it in front of the little cow to milk. The cow then got excited and knocked the little dim lamp over. The little fire from the little lamp set fire to the little hay. Quickly, the little fire ignited the little barn. And a little wind carried the fire to their little house. And eventually to their little town. The fire burned from October 8th to October 10th out of control. 17,000 buildings were destroyed, 300 people dead, 100,000 people were left homeless. The fire burned a four mile long and one mile area of Chicago. Finally, a little rain came blowing in and rain that helped the firefighters in their effort. Looting and lawlessness broke out. Martial law was declared. The military was called in to duty to establish control again. Today, the Chicago Fire Department has a training academy on the exact same place where all the little things came together at once and started something big. Why do the little things, why do the small things matter? I'm reminding this place a little bit of sin that is undealt with can have bigger consequences. The second thing I believe 
why small things matter is simply because, number two, it affects future responsibilities. In our scripture, Jesus is highlighting a man and his neglect about current responsibilities. And he is shocked to discover his current diligence will affect his future. And in verse number 10, uh, he who is faithful in, in, in uh, least is faithful in much also. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust in also as well. And verse, think about it, in verse number two, he simply tells him a shocking thing. What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be steward. Do you remember that job that you were dreaming of to have? You know, one day you would be the big boss, one day you would be El Jefe, you, 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 you'd be the, the top one. So yeah, well guess what? That is no longer your future, because you're fired. Say, so, hey, hey, well, why? Simply because I was preparing you for a future that you had no idea you were being prepared for. And all the responsibilities that I've given you today have an effect on that. Jesus makes this a further point. In Matthew 25, 23, look at the NIV version. It says, His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. The New Living Translation puts it like this. Here's a sticker. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now, I will give you many more responsibilities. Let me ask you a question this evening. Are you responsible with what you are already in control of? Well, Pastor, I, the will of God, you know, there's all these, I know, but what about the things you have to do right now? The responsibility, well, you know, one of these days I hope to give to the church and hundreds, thousands, yeah, but are you what about the, the simple money you have today? You know, God will not give you more than you are ready for. Yeah, you know, one day I want to get married. Yet. But can you handle the simple responsibilities of your own life? You know, your future really depends upon the small matters today. Your big future, the big will of God hinges on the small things that are happening today. Third thing, why small things matter is because one day we must all give account. We are stewards of all that God gives us in this life. And in our scripture, the ser servant has to, uh, uh, all that the servant has was given to him by the master. And then one of these days, the master, who owns all of this, comes up to the steward and says, Guess what? Now you must give account. Verse number two, so he called him and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be steward. You know, similarly, we will all give account to our master, Jesus Christ. The book of Revelation 20, verse 12 says, I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. Books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. You know, I don't know about you, but it's a daunting task to know that when we stand before God one of these days, He's going to know everything that we've done. You know, I, I don't necessarily believe God is going to go down a checklist, you know, you know, on September 24th, 1996, you know, you were given $20. You were told to go buy, you know, go with toilet paper and buy a few things and bring back the money. You know, I have in my record that you wasted $2. <laughs> I don't believe he's going to go, you know, you had a bowl of cereal and you wasted a little bit. I don't believe he's going to go down the checklist. What, what I believe is that when you stand before God and your life is laid out before him, the weight of all of the wasted time is going to weigh upon you. The times that God has given you as a blessing, as a gift, is going to weigh upon you. The fact that you are living is a gift. 
Yeah, I know people make a big old issue. Well, you know, what about all that's happened in the world, the wars, this and that? You know, how could how could God you know, do this? Why why are they why do they have to die? You know, why has this happened? But the truth is, what about you? What about your life? And the fact that you're living here, the blessings that you've been given. You know, we are stewards of many things. We are stewards of our finances that God has given us. We are stewards tonight of our time. We are stewards of our children, of our ministries, of our quiet times. We are stewards even of our own soul. And the question has to be asked is when you stand before God and He lays out your entire life before you, whom we must all give a count, can you honestly say that I have been a good steward over all that God has given me? All that God has given, I've, I've, I've taken care of it. Luke, Luke 19, verse 17, and he said to him, Well done, good, good servant, because you are faithful in very little, have authority over ten cities. Now, one day God will ask you, what did you do with the time that you were given? Well, it was a small life. My time. I want to do it. What about the blessings, the inheritance, the opportunities, the ministries, the time that I've given you, it all matters. Let's look lastly, amen, this evening. About great results. You know, a God who sees all that we do is not a bad thing. You know, for some people, when they think about a God who pays attention to all that you do, it's scary. It's kind of intimidating. Oh, my God, he's sees every you know when you're in the wrong <laughs> of course it's scary if you if you're a sinner you you, you uh, if you're on the run from the law how many know you're conscious of every camera that's around the world because you know one of these days it's going to catch up to me but if you're in the right you're a law-abiding citizen you don't got a warrant you paid your bills it doesn't matter how many cameras are there i'm right and the reality is this scene if you are living right with god the fact that he's paying attention to everything that you do is a great thing. Job 31 verse 4, Does he not see my ways and count all my steps? A God who sees all that we do is not a bad thing because this tells us all things that we do, it places a big meaning on it. It matters. It matters. You know why? Because God sees it. Think about your giving for a moment. You know, giving might, at this moment in time might not be all that much. But it's your 10% that you're giving. You're only making $7, $8 an hour, but you're able to tithe off of that. You're making a sacrifice. You're trusting God with your finances. It might not be all that much. But guess what Luke 21 verse 1 says? As Jesus looked up, he saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury temple. And he also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. In the same vein, God says, if you are faithful in very little, I will entrust you with very much. It's no shocker, amen, in the kingdom of God that people who are wise with their finances, good stewards, and givers to the kingdom of God, God says, you are faithful in little, I will grant you more. I remind you of this place. If you're really saying, I, I need a better job, I need more finances, more opportunity, be faithful with the finances that you've been given. Who cares how big the amount is? No, God sees. Not only that, your testimony. Doing righteous things what no one else notices. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret himself will reward you openly. Your testimony, the righteous things that you do when no one else is looking, God says it matters. 
I see. But who cares if no one else notices? Who cares if no one else pats you on the back, congratulates you, throws a party? There's a God in heaven who sees all that you do. Yes, the big, but also the very small. Remember David, a man who was forgotten by the world in the backside of the, uh, the fields. Yet his God, whom he served righteously, saw him in the fields and made David a king. Your testimony matters. The things you do when no one else is around, the times that you're helpful, the times that you're kind, the times that you're faithful. Your prayer life puts this in perspective as well. Praying alone. Maybe when no one applauds you for your faithfulness to do it, if you know that all things are under the watchful eye of God, the big and yes, even the small matter, when no one else even sees, it matters. Matthew 6, 5. The NIV version says this. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. That's the big thing. Look, look at me, look, I'm praying. He said, look, look, look at verse 6. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. That's your prayer life. Even if you're by yourself, if no one else notices, no one else applauds, you do these things. And this is the will of God because he sees it all. From the very first step to the very last, God sees and places an emphasis on the small matters. Everything we do matters. The Word of God, as you spend time in it on a daily basis, matters. Witnessing, your honesty, your kindness, your purity matters. All of these things. Job acknowledges God's watchful eye. He sees all that I do. Are you still concerned tonight with the small things? It was Booker T. Washington who once said, Success in life is founded upon attention to the small things rather than to the large things, to the everyday things nearest, nearest to us rather than to the things that are remote and uncommon. That's what was the will of God for my life. This big old great thing, this big old huge question. So, well, you know what the will of God is? Every single day, you take care of what you need to. You are a wise steward with what God has given you. Whoever is faithful in least is also faithful in much. You have no idea that God might be preparing you right now in the small, quiet moments of your life for the greater things ahead. And if you're not careful, you're going to neglect all these small things. Ah, it doesn't matter. No one cares. The devil will lie to you every single day. But there's a God in heaven that says, he who is faithful in least is faithful in much. The small things. But I'll close with this last story and I'm done here. There was once an emperor in the Far East who was growing and old, growing old and knew it was coming time for him to choose a successor. Instead of choosing one of his assistants or even one of his own children, he decided to do something different. He called all the young people in the kingdom together one day and he said, It has come time for me to step down and choose the next emperor. And I have decided to choose one of you. These kids were obviously shocked. But the emperor continued, I am going to give each one of you a seed today. Just one seed. It is a very special seed. And I want you to go home, plant the seed and water it, and come back here one year from today with what you have grown from this one seed. I will then judge the plants that you bring to me, and the one I choose will be the next emperor of the kingdom. There was one boy named Ling who was there that day, and he, like the others, received a seed. He went home and excitedly told his mother the whole story. She helped him get a pot and some planting soil, and he planted the seed and watered it carefully. Every day he would water it, and watched to see if it had grown. After about three weeks, some other, of the other children began to talk about their seeds, the plants that they were beginning to grow. Ling kept going home and checking his seed, but nothing ever grew. Three weeks, four weeks, five weeks went by, still nothing. 
By now, all the others were talking about their plans, but Ling didn't have a plan, and he felt like a failure. Six months went by, still nothing in Ling's pot. He just knew he had killed his seed. Everyone else had trees and tall plants, but he had nothing. Ling didn't say anything to his friends, however. He just kept waiting for his seed to grow. A year finally went by, and all the youths of the kingdom brought their plants to the emperor for inspection. Ling told his mother that he wasn't going to take an empty pot, but she encouraged him to go and take his pot and be honest about what happened. Ling, fe Ling felt sick to his stomach, but he knew his mother was right. He took his empty pot to the palace, and when Ling arrived, he was amazed at the variety of plants grown by all the other youths. They were beautiful in all shapes and sizes. And Ling arrived and put his empty pot on the floor, and many other kids laughed at him. A few felt sorry for him and just said, nice try. When the emperor arrived, he surveyed the room and greeted the young crowd. And Ling just tried to hide in the back, fully ashamed. My, what great plants and trees and flowers you all have grown, said the emperor. Today, one of you will be appointed the next emperor. All of a sudden, the emperor spotted Ling at the back of the room with his empty pot in hand. He ordered his guards to bring him to the front. Ling was terrified. The emperor knows I'm a failure, he thought. Maybe he will have me killed. And when Ling got to the front, the emperor asked his name. He said, my name is Ling. And all the kids were laughing and make, making fun of him. The emperor asked everyone to quiet down. He looked at Ling. Then he looked at the crowd and announced, Behold your new emperor. His name is Ling. Nobody could leave, believe it, let alone Ling. He couldn't even grow his seed. How could he be the next emperor? Then the emperor spoke up. He said, One year ago today, I gave everyone here a seed. And I told you to take the seed, plant it, water it, and bring it back to me today. But I gave you all boiled seeds that would not grow. All of you, every single one except Ling, have brought me trees and plants and flowers. When you found that the seed would not grow, you substituted another seed for the one I gave you. Ling was the only one with courage and honesty to bring me a pot with my seed in it. Therefore, he is the one who will be the next emperor. Now, one of these days, God will say, of all the things, there, there's simple, small, everyday matters in your life that might not be on a billboard, that might not scream to the entire world, but there are small, everyday matters in your life that matter to me. They might not matter to the world. The devil will lie to you that you, you can put away these things, you can hide a little bit, it doesn't matter. Luke 16, 10 says, he who is faithful in what is uh, he who is uh, faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. The will of God involves the small things. That's all I have tonight. It's going to bow our heads and close our eyes. Amen. This see me in church. Man, first order of business, amen, tonight. Man, if you're in this place, you're not saved, not born again, not right with God. Maybe you're here this evening and for a long time, maybe you thought, you know, I can hide this little bit of sin in my life. It's okay, I can deal with it. It's not a big thing. The truth is, sin builds an appetite, even a little bit. And who knows, maybe right now you're in this place, you're watching online, you're thinking, I never thought I would have come this far. I never thought my life would have fallen apart this bad. I didn't think it would be this bad. All that came down to a simple choice many years ago to get involved in sin. Who knows? But tonight... Of all the decisions you can make in life, you can make a small choice this evening and say, Oh God, I admit that I'm a sinner. I want to be saved. I want to be forgiven. And I want to say a simple, little, small prayer tonight. And I want to be forgiven. The will of God involved in making heaven or home being saved. That's a big thing. But guess what starts? It? A little prayer of confession. A small thing that the world might not even consider or care about. But we know how important it is. Very quick tonight, you're not saved, not right, we got not born again this evening. Why don't you lift your hands, amen, tonight. And the change of the call is speaking to the church. Let's go ahead and stand to our feet, amen, tonight in this place.
If you're in this place this evening, man, I want to encourage you, amen, consider the small things. Of all that happens, I understand we have big questions. What does God want for my life? Job and marriage and the ministry, you know, making heaven my home and putting my family back together, you know, rebuild my home, buying a house, all these things. Those are big things, I understand. But do not neglect the small things. Zechariah says, do not neglect, do not look down upon the small things in life. Who has despised the day of small things, he says. And I will encourage you in this place, if you want to know what the will of God is for your life, it's every single day. All the small moments, all the secret times, all the hidden places where no one else even knows. God says, I see and I pay attention. And he who is faithful in least will also be faithful in much as well. So this evening, church, if God has spoken to you tonight, God has challenged you, I want you to come and find a place to pray here at these altars, amen, tonight. We're going to do some business at the altar, amen, this evening. You know, we must all give account to God one of these days. The reality is, God will ask our question. If God asks you right now, what have you done with the time I've given you? What have you done with the ministry, the talents, the friends, the influence, the blessings, the family, the marriage, the children? Oh, what, what have you done with these things? The finances that I've given you, all these things that no one else cares about, the hidden areas of your life, have you place emphasis upon those. Do you see how vital, how important these things are? I mean, tonight we need to consider the small things. I understand the will of God is the big things. Well, Pastor, one of these days I want to become a preacher, you know what? I, I believe that God wants to send me out a pastor's wife or a pastor. I understand the small things. What about your daily prayer life? Your, your, your time spent in the Word of God. Your faithfulness, when no one is even, no one even cares. The, the, the times that you're right with God, not only in the very end, but every single day. When no one sees, no one pays attention. The quiet moments in your life, when no one is even next to you, can you still be right with God? Can you do the right thing? Because the small things matter in the eyes of God. And who knows what great future God has in store for us, amen, tonight. Who knows what great things that God is already preparing for you and I in this place. But God is watching us, man. God is paying attention. A watchful lion, a watchful God, yes, I understand, is a daunting task when you're not right with Him. But when you're living righteously, man, tonight, church, it's encouraging. God, you see all that I'm doing this day, God. Oh, Lord God, if you would open your eyes, God, see my faithfulness. God, help me this day. Oh, yes, worthy is your name. Worthy is your name tonight, God. Oh, Lord God, we dedicate our lives to you this day, God. God, we dedicate our quiet times, Lord God. Oh, yes, worthy, worthy is your name. He is a little bit of 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 a little bit Into the holy place, past the brazen altar. Lord, I want to see your face. Ask me by the crowns of people. Priests who sing your praise. I hunger and thirst for your righteousness. It's only found the one place. Take me into the holy. Take me in by the blood of the 
Lamb, oh yes, take me into the Holy of Holies, take the cold, cleanse my lips, here I am, take the cold, cleanse my lips, here I am. Oh, yes, let's give God praise tonight in this place. Father God, we thank you, Lord, we praise you. Jesus, we exalt you tonight, God. The elevation, da, 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 oh, yes, God, we thank you, Lord. Worthy, worthy is your name. Amen. Tonight, we're going to close with just some of our encouragement in this place. You know, God really does pay attention to all that we do. It's a daunting task, amen, when you're not right with God, but when you're saved, born again, it really gives you hope for all the things you do. Oh, God, you're paying attention. Even though it else does, God, I know you're paying attention. I know you see my faithfulness. I know you see. And God, prepare me for the future as I take care of the everyday simple tasks of my life. And I'm a wise steward. I'm going to take care of what you've given me, God. I'm going to make sure I use it to its fullest. Because I know the great things ahead for my life. So this same church, hope that challenge you, hope that encourage you. I remind you, man, we do have service once again on Sunday. Be mindful about that, amen. We're going to go from this place. Uh, we're going to go into all that God has for us. Continue to talk to people, witness, uh, stay close to God, amen. And bring someone to church on Sunday. We have a tremendous time once again. So let's go and bow our heads. We're going to close our eyes as we dismiss in prayer this evening. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight, God. We thank you and praise you, Lord, for all that you've done, God, all that you are. We pray, Lord, God, that you would let these words, God, be deposited in our hearts this day. We pray that you would help us, Lord, God. Let these words penetrate. God, let us be changed, Father, God, as we go from this place. It brings back safe for service once again on Sunday. And Jesus, pray. In mighty name we pray, and all the guys people said, Amen. Amen. God bless, and we'll see you on Sunday.